Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Innovation Coffee. This is our weekly live stream brought to you by ARM Software Developers. My name is Robert Wolf and I am your host today. And we have a very exciting one planned for you. Today we'll be meeting with Jason Andrews, who is our Solutions Director in the Software Tools Group here at ARM. Following the theme, last week we met with another folk from ARM, uh, Roberto who talked to us about innovation at ARM. Now, I'm not going to, of course, summarize that episode. It was a lot of fun. I think everyone in the community who joined us also enjoyed um, that episode. Uh, but today, we're gonna be talking about Docker containers, Docker containers running on multi-arc and multi-platform. Now, I know this might not make sense to you now, but that's why we have the resident professional here to explain this to us. Now, today, we're gonna go through of course, what all of this means. Jason brought a really nice presentation to share with us, so he'll go through some slides. We'll summarize all the cool ins and outs of Docker and running on multi-arc, multi-platform. And then he also has some cool demos for us, as well as a repository that you'll be able to go fork and use to experiment with the things that he shows us. Now, without further ado, I wanna bring him in, but we do have some news to share. I love these little segments, these little clips. We need to get more of those uh, because there's so many cool things that we can do. Um, yeah, so news, this just in, not really because we've summarized this several times already, but if you aren't already familiar with our annual ARM event, we have the ARM Dev Summit right around the corner in October. You're gonna wanna go check this out. It's devsummit.arm. Dot com. We'll get the banner up here in just a second just so that you can go see that website, uh, devsummit.arm.com. Go check that out. Make sure you register for the event. There's lots of really cool stuff happening there this year. Tech sessions, keynotes, workshops, panels, lots of ways to engage with the community and people just like yourself, developers who are working on things that you know we all love to do, right? Uh, you can find people that you want to engage with or collaborate with in the future. And then, of course, uh, if you want to continue on with uh, <clears throat> with uh, the Dev Summit hype, we've also launched a Discord server that you can join as well to kind of continue on the discussions, right? So you join for Dev Summit, but you can continue on with us to indefinite future, hanging out with us in Discord. Join right there, discord.gg forward slash arm software dev. Um, lots of people from ARM in there, so you can also find support uh, through the things that you're working on um, inside that Discord server. One other thing that we'd like to share here is the Dev Summit competition. So we also launched a really cool competition. We shared that link right here as well, developer.arm.com forward slash Dev Summit dash competition. Lots of prizes. We're focused around sustainability this year. So come up with a project, find a team, submit your projects there and uh, you know for a chance to win. All right, here we go. So let's bring Jason onto the call. I think it's time we close these banners out. Let's, let's bring Jason onto the call. Hello, Jason, and welcome to the show. Yeah, good. Hi, Robert. How are you doing? Hello, hello. Let's get a different view here. I'm going to click this one. I like this one. All right, Jason, you got your coffee with you? I do, yeah. It's, uh, it's right here. I got the old school ARM logo. I don't know. I got 
various different arm cups, but for some I reason the, I got that one today. I got the BlizzCon 10th anniversary mug right here. For, for those of you who are familiar with the BlizzCon or Blizzard games, do you play any games, Jason? I am not a gamer, no. I, oh, okay. uh, <laughs> don't ask me any game questions. That's okay. that, that will not no, go well. No, unless it's in a container. Yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Well, Very cheers, true. cheers, and hopefully you also brought your innovation hat because it's innovation coffee. Um, so, Jason, what we usually like to do here before we dive right into the you know subject matter, we want to get to know our guest. So, we've never had you on this call before. Jason, welcome. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do at ARM? Yeah, that's right. So, I'm, I'm Jason Andrews. I, uh, I work in the software tools group in ARM, so primarily I do a variety of things around different types of tools. So, kind of a little bit of a generalist in that sense. So we work with compilers and debuggers, performance analysis, a lot of modeling, um, you know, both pre-silicon type projects and uh, post-silicon software development. Uh, yeah, I worked in machine learning quite a bit. Uh, today we're gonna talk about containers. So yeah, lots of different topics generally. Uh, yeah, just trying to help out the ARM ecosystem anywhere I can. And I mean, you know, usually I like to see if there's a fun personal anecdote that people like to share. When you're not developing at ARM, when you're not doing some cool tech stuff, what do you do for fun? Do you do anything for fun? Maybe you do just tech stuff for fun. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much a golfer. I like to play a lot of golf. That's how I grew up. So I'm, I'm from Minnesota. I don't know if you can see my cup in the back there, a little Minnesota logo on my other coffee cup. But uh, where I live, there's two things you can do. In the winter, we play hockey. In the summer, we play golf. So uh, that's pretty much what I did. I was a hockey player all along, still love to skate and play outside and uh, golf in the summer. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Yeah, cool. So today, we're going to be talking about Docker containers and how they can be used for multi-arc or on multi-platform, on multi-arc multi-architectures, multi-platforms. So let's start off at a high level, right? Let's just assume that someone's watching and doesn't know what Docker is or what a container is. And I know you have a presentation, you're gonna kind of elaborate a lot further on all of this, but could you just kind of talk to us a little bit about high level? What is Docker? What are containers? Yeah, that's right. So container is really a unit to share, share software. Um, you know, the best way to think of it is just how Docker advertises build, share, and run. So it's a way to build a, a package of software and share it across many different kinds of machines, different places and run it. And it's, it's really kind of transformed uh, not only application deployment, but also the development environment that people use because everything is much more reproducible and much more portable, a lot easier to work with, to move that thing around and really get rid of all those developer annoyances where you know your machine is different than mine and it never quite works right. Uh, Doc really abstracts all that away. So correct me if I'm wrong, a lot of times the way I feel about containers is it's almost like an app, you know, like you have your phone and you go to the app store and you get an app and it just kind of works, right? And so that's mm -hmm. kind of the way I usually look at containers. It just kind of like is a, is, an, is, a, is a package that you can download and it should just work on your device. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I could tell endless stories of our ARM partners who are trying to do software development and, you know, ARM is great at providing all kinds of open source and instructions and filling up GitHub with stuff and then developers going and trying to use it and it's a challenge, right? So I almost at least every few days somebody contacts me and says, you know, I can't get tool one, two, tool, tool number two, and this other software, it all work together. And I send them usually to Docker Hub and they get a container and they download it and they say, well, okay, it just worked. <laughs> so that's, uh, that happens quite a lot. So let's, just, let's, get them, let's get everyone on containers. <laughs> yeah, it definitely helps. I mean, as a support person, uh, it's, you just know what's going to happen when somebody downloads that as opposed to individual libraries and tools and things. You're really not very sure what's going to happen when they try it because they've got all different kinds of computers. Yeah, no, it makes sense. Makes sense. Yep. So let's, let's talk about, we're going to dive, we're going to go now a layer deeper here. So we talked about Docker, what are containers? When we say multi-architecture, multi-platform, now what does this mean to mm -hmm. the developer, to the user who is using these containers for a multi-arc or multi-platform purpose? Yeah, that's right. So I think in terms of architecture, um, you know, the ARM architecture is certainly one of the most popular in the world, but it's not the only one. There are other ones. And, you know, kind of from a developer point of view, there's different types of developers. Some of them don't really care about architecture. I mean, you'll see this in cloud. 
Um, you know, it doesn't really matter. The languages are kind of interpreted and they just run and does, who cares what kind of computers underneath. So in, in some sense, that's nice. Uh, but sometimes we have projects that are more architecture dependent. So they, they could be embedded things or where really it does make a difference what's underneath. But, you know, as Docker has evolved, it's really become quite capable to, you know, either abstract that architecture detail away if you don't care or allow you to take advantage of it and build containers on a certain type of machine, like maybe a very powerful cloud instance, and then bring it to an embedded device uh, where it needs to run in a small footprint and fast. So that uh, you know, ability to exchange like that across the architecture with Docker is really nice. And I remember, um, that's a great explanation, by the way, and I, I remember there was a tech con up in San Jose. This was like three years ago now, pre-COVID, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, and you gave a workshop over there about this. It was kind of the multi-arc, I think, aspect of it, where we pulled out a Raspberry Pi. Everyone was given a Raspberry Pi. We had our <clears throat> most likely x86-based workstation or laptop. And then you also, I think, offered AWS instances. And so we were able to take a container that you gave us, and then we were able to just modify small parameters within that container, uh, rebuild it, if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. and then run it on all of these different architectures or different instances, different Work, workstations, let's call them. Um, do you recall that? Oh yeah, yeah, that's fun. I mean, that, that was one of the highlights every year was at the you know Dev Summit, uh, or it was previously called TechCon. We we did those type of workshops, and they were great fun. We just had people in a room, and we got out some hardware, and we did labs, and we walked around and had a great time. I really miss it, actually. Oh, me too. Yeah. Hopefully, they're coming back soon. I just I re I recall that very specifically because it was so cool to sit down there with my you know my laptop, and then mm -hmm. you handed well you know there were people around handed me a piece of paper with my SSH how to get into the into the AWS instance, and then right. I got a Raspberry Pi. I plugged that in, and then I just basically got to run the container on these three different devices. It was really cool. So um, great experience. Yeah. That was probably one of my favorite workshops, and I still remember it to this day because it's one of my favorite <laughs> ones I've ever done. Yeah, great. That was fun. Sure. Yeah, and you offered some great documentation for that as well. Mm -hmm. So let's go back into this. I, you know, we kind of talked about, and I'm sure you'll get to this, why is this so important for developers to be able to use this multi-arc or multi-platform, using containers on multi-arc and multi-platform. But I want to dive a little bit more into ARM and computing. So mm -hmm. let's, let's kind of look at a history here a history and where it's going, but how has ARM computing changed over time to, to accommodate yeah. or let's kind of use it in a synergy with these containers? Yeah, it's really interesting because, um, you know, ARM is obviously 30 years old and the workshop you reference is just a few years ago, <laughs> but even since then, uh, it's changed a lot. So when we did that workshop, like you say, everybody probably had you know, Windows laptop, which was the x86 uh, that they brought. And then we had the Raspberry Pi and we had in those days in AWS, the A1 instance, which was the first ARM instance uh, in the AWS cloud. And since then, even in the last few years, we're seeing, you know, much more proliferation. So we kind of started from the point of most developers were using Docker to target embedded uh, kind of application, so small board, small footprint, running Linux, um, some smaller Cortex-A type applications. And they were trying to get their containers into that type of environment for their deployment. Now, since then, just in the last few years, you know, we've seen Docker on the ARM architecture explode everywhere. So, you know, now we have things on our desk that can run it. We have more powerful cloud instances. We have multiple cloud vendors now offering uh, the ARM architecture in the cloud. So, yeah, it's really proliferated quite a lot to, to go from a place where, you know, we were just mostly targeting the one embedded thing to on your desk and in the cloud, um, ARM architecture most everywhere now. So, thank you so much for that. You say yeah. things on your desk, and that makes me think of Innovation Coffee Cribs. Let's do uh, that. Oh. Innovation Coffee Cribs, here we go. So this is the segment where we explore the cool things that our guests have on their desks um, or around their home. 
And Jason, mm-hmm. we talked in the green room. You have something pretty pretty cool on your desk that you want to talk about, right? Uh, yeah, I have a lot of stuff on the desk, but you can probably guess that in my world, uh, I use ARM everything. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I, I use every product that I can find, which has the ARM architecture inside of it. So one of them I have, I'm just going to hold up here. This is the Samsung uh, Galaxy Book S. Uh, so this is a Windows 10 uh, laptop. It's very small, super light. Uh, you can see it there. Uh, this is based on the ARM architecture. It has uh, LTE built into it. So whenever I go somewhere to drive my kids around, I just pick this up. I go take them to their sports or dancing or whatever they do, and I pop it open, and you know, I can use it right there with the SIM card. So it's pretty cool, and, uh, yeah, battery lasts a long time. So it's it's one of my favorite uh, ARM things. And, yeah, it runs Docker. We can run WSL2 with Linux inside there. Um, yeah, you can, you can do all the same Docker things I'll show today. I actually pulled out my ARM-based laptops as well since we were talking about that, and I thought I'd show them too. So I have a, here the Pinebook Pro, Pine64 mm-hmm. Pinebook Pro. Uh, this is one of my favorites here. Um, it was gifted to us by the, the Pine64 uh, community manager, Lucas, and um, really cool little device here. I've had a chance to play around with it quite a bit. And then one of my first ones here uh, which was introduced to me by Richard Henwood, one of our colleagues. Maybe you're familiar with him. Yeah. Uh, this is the C630, Lenovo C630. And again, you know, it's, it's funny because, you know, we talk about how, uh, you know, ARM is everywhere now. And it really wasn't everywhere more than just a few years ago. Yeah. And now you have just a plethora of workstations and places that you can, you know, go about your daily activities, things that you would just normally do. And here you are doing them now on ARM and you wouldn't even know the difference, right? Other than yeah. maybe other than maybe just kind of always connected, like you mentioned, your device is always connected and or extremely low heat and long battery life. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I yeah. haven't had anything on my desk with a fan for quite a while, so I, I love yeah. that. It's pretty crazy. I went to uh, the Qualcomm campus uh, not too long ago. Well, I say not too long ago, pre-COVID, of course, so a few years ago. And they had a, you know, by the way, Qualcomm has some great laptops out there with their chipsets, mm-hmm. um, with 5G always connected, stuff like that that are coming out. But um, I remember going to the Qualcomm campus and what they did is they had a, they had their laptops, they had laptops open and they were kind of like sitting <clears throat> on the monitor side. And so they had a, they had an x86 laptop sitting there and then they had an ARM-based laptop sitting there. And then they had a heat sensor or a heat camera looking at them. And you could see the arm. It was like it was like mostly blue with a little bit of yellow where the chipset was. And then you mm-hmm. could see the X86 one. And it was just like freaking just red. The whole thing was red, heat, fan on, everything. Um, so pretty, pretty interesting analysis there. That's uh, yeah. it's definitely pretty cool. I will say well, I have one fan sometimes, which is when I try to overclock the Raspberry Pi. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that's always fun to try and see what you can do. Yeah, if you're running some of those uh, more compute intensive, or uh, what do you call compute intensive processes, but also some yeah. of the uh, some some of the SBCs, some of the single board computers out there just kind of need fans. They, they run a little hotter than others. Um, that's no problem, though. <laughs> All right, cool. So let's let's move on to your presentation. Oh, do we have a question here? So it looks like a question popped up. I haven't been monitoring the comments. I got too into the conversation. So David W. asks, what's the best way to go about learning to build your first container? I think you're going to oh, get into this. Yeah, you'll see that if you hang around <laughs> a little <laughs> bit more. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty easy. We'll have some links that can point you to some documentation. Actually, there's tons of tutorials out there yeah. uh, that you can find. So yeah, it's yeah. cool. And Jason is notorious for providing really good documentation. I will say that. I mean, in, in the in the past, like I said, this workshop that we took, there was amazing documentation there. So stick around. You will get access to uh, one of our repositories where we have this cool project that they created, um, and you'll get access to that. We'll go, we got more more questions coming up here. I guess let's take these before. Yeah, we well, yeah, no problem. All right. So here's another one from David W. Does containerization scale to dev boards like the Jetson Nano, Raspberry Pi, even MCUs? Yes, of course. Yeah. So that one of the key things about Docker is you can deploy it in uh, even embedded boards, very small stuff. Generally, Docker is targeted for uh, Linux. So, you know, the board kind of needs to run Linux. There's numerous projects that try to shrink containers, even on the Linux, um, you know, underlying Linux to make it smaller and smaller. 
Uh, so you can look for some, some shrinking projects like that. And uh, microcontroller is very popular right now. So lots of people trying to innovate in the microcontroller space and bring that same functionality, even though the thing underneath is not the, the Linux OS. So I think you're going to see a lot of um, innovation in that space coming up. Awesome, awesome. And then we have one more here. This is from, I'm hoping I pronounce this correctly, but Hycrit. Um, Hycrit, I know nothing about Docker systems. Is it similar to virtual machines? And you know what? This is actually a question that I've heard on several occasions, you know, where people right. can pair kind of containerization to virtual machines, but love to get yep. the answer to this one. Well, I, the way I think about it is, um, you know, a, a system really has two parts. There's the operating system, and then there's like the user space with all the programs and applications. Okay, so the way to think about a virtual machine is it's uh, doing all of that. So it's, it's a copy of the operating system, all the file system, all the applications, and that's bundled into a virtual machine. Uh, the way I think about Docker is really the file system part. So all the, just the applications and you know, the directories and all of the things there, that's really what Docker is doing. And if, if you hang around and see the demos, uh, you'll see that you know, the, where you, you build the container, it does, you can reference the operating system, but when you move it to another machine with a different version of let's say Linux, you'll see the old one kind of came with it. <laughs> so it's very interesting to see how the containers move around and where they were constructed. But, that um, the operating system doesn't move around in the containers. And that's why they're smaller and faster is because you know, it's relying on the, the operating system that where you deploy it. Awesome, I think that answers the question mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, so one last thing I had to, to ask you or at least comment on and hopefully, I'm sure you'll talk about this in the presentation more of course, but you know, ARM recently launched its own Docker namespace. Will you be talking about this? Is yeah, yeah, I'm gonna talk about that for okay. sure. Yeah, we'd love Perfect. to have people uh, participate in that. Definitely. Excellent, excellent. So I guess let's just, let's dive okay. into that talk and we're gonna kind of give you the floor for the next 10 or some odd minutes. I will do that. So I just have a few slides. I mean, it's nothing, um, you know, super complicated. Is that clear to go, Robert? Yeah, yeah, go ahead and share okay. your screen so I can bring it in. Should be there. David, David Tischler's here, one of our esteemed ARM innovators. Once you have the slide up, I'll, I'll bring your screen up here. Okay. There we go. I'll bring you in. Right, this one. I think, uh, yeah. Oops. The, the whale, but Belina slash Docker. Belina. <laughs> okay. How's that? You see the title slide? Okay. We can see that. Yeah. Building multi-arc Docker containers and the new Docker Hub namespace. All right. Okay. Nailed it. So there you go. I, I, I just predicted you were going to say that. <laughs> Okay, so I just have a few slides. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, developing on ARM, for ARM, uh, some GitHub stuff we have you can take a look at, and then the Docker namespace uh, that uh, Robert just mentioned, then we'll get into some demos uh, after that. So, you know, kind of as we mentioned in the, the opening there, there's lots of things that are happening with the ARM architecture, and it's really spanning, you know, the whole thing now. So we started off kind of in the embedded and the IoT space. You know, Raspberry Pi has been tremendous just in terms of enabling more and more software to be ported to the ARM architecture. And then we kind of followed with cloud when um, AWS first came out with the Graviton A1 instances, and now we're into Graviton 2, and there's just a lots of different uh, configurations you can choose from there. Uh, we also have Oracle Cloud just came online with um, ARM instances in their cloud. So again, those are available now. They have a really interesting free plan where you can have essentially free access to four cores and 24 gig RAM forever. I mean, you can just keep using it. It's really, really awesome. I encourage people Jason, to check that out. Real quick, if I can add to this, um, mm -hmm. this brings up a really good point um, we recently relaunched what we called the Works on ARM program. So I want to share this link here. Uh, right along the lines of what Jason just said, Oracle with their free tier, AWS launched something similar and OS, OSU OSL, so OSU University Open Source Labs has something similar as well as Equinix, Packet Equinix has one too. So I'm gonna share this here and you can go to the Works on ARM page on developer.arm.com. Check that out because if you have a cool project or if you're porting something to ARM, great place to go get access to resources 
for you to start building your stuff out there, especially like in the interim before you decide to mm -hmm. kind of, you know, buy yourself this, this, uh, buy your, buy your instance on your own, get access to some free resources first. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, no that problem. That's good great. I, mean, I can before. hardly keep up with all this stuff. There's so, so many new, uh, <laughs> new arm uh, things coming out so and then we talked a little about desk i showed the windows 10 on arm which is is popular and very good for docker uh linux the one we didn't mention was the chromebooks i'm really excited this year for some new chromebooks to come out that you know they have linux support they do so work with docker you can run docker on chromebooks and i think there's going to be some upcoming ones with higher performance that are going to be really fun this year okay um just a little bit of history, kind of what, what Robert was mentioning. I mean, we, we've kind of transitioned now from, you know, most people working on a mix of x86 on their desk and then targeting embedded, maybe pulling in cloud now. This is kind of 2018, 2019. And now the last couple of years, 2020 and 21, we're really seeing, you know, ARM images just be running everywhere. So it's pretty neat that we, we can do that and developers can work more natively with, with ARM across all of their, their different projects and the, the types of devices that they target. Um, so let me just go a little bit over this. So, you know, the his, history of embedded Linux and embedded software development was really all about cross compile. And, and one of my mantras in life, I don't know if I'll succeed before I retire or die, but you know, I like to eliminate cross compiling. It's just really annoying. It's hard. People struggle with it. And the complexity just makes it very difficult because the thing you're compiling for is not the machine you're using to compile. So it, it just has lots of uh, difficulties. And you know, some of that is really uh, solved by Docker and we have this consistent environment and we can move the containers around um, even when you're running on the wrong ar architecture. So that's kind of this orange block. So, you know, this has gotten better and better in the last couple of years where you can run containers for a certain architecture on a machine, which is a different architecture. And it's pretty transparent. It's really improved quite a lot. So, you know, it's kind of in the, the orange color there. And, you know, that environment is really sort of taking over compared to the cross compile or building on the target system, right? So when the Raspberry Pi first came, everybody had trouble with cross compiling and they said, I'll just build it on the board. And I had numerous people, you know, tell me, yeah, I waited overnight. It was too slow. The SD card is a little slow. I mean, it's fine to run applications, but to build large applications is a different story. So that's kind of what, what you can see with Docker is we can kind of overcome all of these areas. And even when you're on a machine with the different architecture than when you're targeting, it's, it's pretty usable. So it's come a long way, very nice. Um, okay, so I think this pretty much sums up, you know, what we've been talking about. So embedded and IoT combined with desktop and cloud, right? So we can work with the ARM architecture across all those three, we can uh, build, share, and uh, run containers across all those. And, you know, for most developers, this is pretty much the world they live in. Uh, you know, taking a mix of compute resources at the right time, if they have a large build job, they can move it to a large Graviton instance, deploy it to an uh, embedded board, they can work with their code on their desk, they can do remote builds. There's a lot of combinations here uh, that are possible, and it's, it's pretty neat. Okay, so one idea I wanted to highlight here is um, a Docker guide for ARM developers. So we have an area in GitHub currently, uh, which has uh, lots of instructions. And I'll, I'll bring up the web page maybe in a little bit that can kind of show you how to you know, do different things with Docker, whether it's just to build an ARM image straight away or to use what we call BuildX, which is the multi-architecture images. Uh, you can use that. Uh, I'll show some different ways to work with GitHub Actions and build containers automatically when you check in new code. Um, so there's some good instructions there for various kind of ARM platforms uh, that you can learn how to work with those and, um, and work with Docker. Okay, the other one I wanted to highlight is the namespace. So in Docker Hub, uh, ARM has started to ramp up a place for our software developer community to get access to more ARM images. So we've got uh, a place there where ARM has become a verified publisher in the Docker verified publisher program. And we're gonna start ramping up more images there so people can get access to those things that are hard to build 
um, just available for download and run. We've used it for a variety of things so far, different kinds of ARM tools. Um, we used it for machine learning projects where you have a fairly complex machine learning stack with TensorFlow or PyTorch. And um, it's a quick way to just get the latest and greatest uh, of those projects, download the container and start it up and you can get right into machine learning instead of you know spending the first few days trying to compile all these different tools and make it function. So that's going to come available and you'll see more content there uh, sure. in the near future. Uh, Jason, I want to I want to kind of like pause on this one for a second and talk a little bit about that first sub bullet point under collaboration. Because mm -hmm. You can push images there. There's a small amount of people who can push images there, but there might be people out there who are building really cool things and want to host them with us. So um, could you maybe go through the process of how people might get their images hosted under this official namespace? Yeah, if you have anything you want to share and you think is, is useful, um, you know, let us know and we can uh, go ahead and uh, share some of those. So one of the things I think which came up this week. I don't know how big of an impact this is going to be, but Docker has changed a little bit um, some of their uh, license models and the products that they're selling. And I think in some cases, some companies might even start limiting, uh, you know, employees' ability to pull any kind of random containers from Docker Hub. So, you know, one thing that's going to help ARM in this namespace is that we'll be a verified publisher. So that should be available to everybody, regardless of your uh, company policies or security or procedures. And so if you have stuff, we can definitely check it out, uh, make sure it's good quality and, and share it there. So yeah, just let me know. Excellent. And uh, we'll be able to provide your contact information in the description later. Yep, that'll be awesome. Excellent. Okay, cool. Okay, so that's pretty much all on the slides. Um, you know, as, as you've probably figured out by now, I like to promote software development on ARM and for ARM. I think it's, it's great for the whole community and the ecosystem. Uh, I love to write different how-to articles and share information about how developers like to do stuff. We just talked about sharing containers. Um, yeah, just um, moving those containers around on different kind of platforms is a lot of fun. I, I like that motto. Together, let's end cross compilation. Yeah, that's that's my <laughs> that's my mission. That was the bane of my existence back when I was at Lenaro, having to oh, cross compile yeah. stuff. I feel like every single time I had to learn relearn how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible. I mean, it's it's somewhat satisfying if you actually get it, but it shouldn't be that hard, right? <laughs> yeah, totally agree. Cool. Yes, together, let's end cross compilation. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is the end of the slides. Yep, that's that's the slide. So should we move to um, demos? demo time? Okay, let's do that. So I'll remove you. I'll remove it while you get. I'll remove your screen share while you get set up there, and then let me know when you're ready for me to bring it back in. Um, in the meanwhile, let me see. Some stuff has popped up here. That's just me typing some stuff. Um, but yeah, I want to remind everyone while we're here. Uh, if you are enjoying this video. Uh, please feel free to hit that like button down there. Somewhere on YouTube, hit that like button. Um, and don't forget to subscribe to the ARM Software Developers YouTube channel, the one you're watching this on right now. Uh, we do go live with these Innovation Coffee episodes every single week on Thursday at 5 p.m. UTC. So uh, we love having you all here. Community questions are always welcome. So if you have any questions for myself or for Jason, feel free to toss them in the chat. And it looks like you're ready. Yeah, let's, uh, let's do it. Excellent, here we go. Okay, so what I'm gonna do today is go through a few different demos. The first one is just gonna be kind of a really basic multi-architecture scenario. So um, you're gonna see throughout the entire thing, I'm gonna use the C program, uh, just the hello world type C program. It, it has a few things of interest. One is just a print statement. It's there every time. Uh, the other one is going to print uh, the architecture. So in whichever kind of architecture you build this program, it's going to print that, uh, whether it's uh, ARM or x86. And then it's also going to print uh, the user space. So this, this kind of differentiates us between a 32-bit or a 64-bit user space. As you know, the ARM architecture uh, has different versions. Typically, we would say version 7 is a 32-bit uh, user space and version eight and above is going to be the 64 bit user space. And you know, there's lots of nuances there, but that, that's generally the simplest thing uh, is to print the um, 
you know, whether it's a 32-bit or 64-bit user space. So what I'm going to do is take this, and then we're going to build different kinds of containers, different ways, and different machines. And you know, as many of them as work, we'll, we'll go through and, and talk through. So that'll be our uh, hello.c. And then here is going to be our Docker file. So this is going to be uh, from Alpine as a base image. So that's a very small Linux. It's uh, very small and simple to work with. And essentially, the Docker file is going to take that Alpine base image. It's going to uh, in, put a copy of the hello.c in there. And it's going to run GCC. And it's going to define the architecture as uname-a. So you'll find out that's probably my favorite Linux command is uname-a because that's essentially telling you all the interesting details about the machine where you're working. And then we take that and we put it in a container and then we just run it. So we'll see you know, the hello message and we'll see the architecture uh, that we're running on and we'll do that in different ways. Okay, so hopefully that's, uh, that's clear for everybody. Okay, so what I'm gonna do first is go on my laptop, which in this case is a Mac and I'm gonna just do a build. Okay, so if I just go through the build process here, uh, we're going to use a build X command to create a builder, and then we're going to build that application I just showed for three different architectures. So AMD 64, ARM 64, and ARM v7. Um, and then we're going to push that to Docker Hub. So this is really what we call multi-architecture because with a single command, I'm going to build a container image which supports three different architectures. So you'll see as the thing goes by, uh, the architectures are printed. It's doing this in parallel. So depending on your machine and how many CPUs you have, it can just build this multi-architecture kind of all at the same time, load the hello.c into that, and then take the, that image and push it to the Docker hub. And that's what it's doing now. So it's all done. Uh, now, if I go in my uh, browser here and jump over to the Docker Hub, let's just go in my personal account, uh, refresh that, you'll see here's my Hello World. It just showed up there now. And if I look at the tags, you'll see there's, a, it's, the way to think of it is like a single image, uh, but there's three uh, kind of derivatives or versions here, depending on the architecture, right? So I've got the AMD 64, the ARMv7, and the ARMv8 or, or ARM64. Okay, so now depending which one I wanna run or what kind of computer I'm on, uh, I can go ahead and execute that image. So let's just take a look at the run. So I've got a few different runs here, and what you'll see is when I run the image, uh, I can specify the platform. So I can say I want the ARM64, the ARMv7, or the AMD 64, or I can just run with nothing and it'll figure out automatically which one I'm on and it will take the, the best choice. So let's just do that first. Just copy this and paste it here. And so it'll say, okay, I don't have this image. I'll go to the hub and get it. And then it will pull that to my local machine uh, and then it'll print out the details. So, you know, it's got some information about the Linux kernel and then it'll give the architecture, in this case, ARC64, and then it'll say it's the 64-bit user space. So um, that's how it goes. Now, if I take a different one, uh, let's just take the ARMv7. So, you know, that's sitting in Docker Hub now, and it can be run also. So if I want to do that explicitly, I can download the ARMv7, pull it here, and now you'll see on the uname command, it shows ARMv7L Linux and a 32-bit user space. And then the last one here is what if I want to pull the AMD 64? So I'll just copy that and paste it. And it'll go ahead and download that variant of the image and then it'll run and you'll see it's x86-64 and 64-bit user space. So you can kind of get the idea from a, if I have an application, I can build for you know, all three architectures and then I can deploy that anywhere I want, either automatically based on the machine I'm on or explicitly by specifying the platform. Um, so this has been a huge improvement because developers can work you know, kind of anywhere they want and they can work with the architecture that's relevant to them and they don't have to get caught up about you know, doing the whole project on one architecture and then suddenly saying, well, when we go to the cloud or the embedded board, we gotta change the architecture, right? That's kind of upsetting uh, if you've got a lot of time and you don't have these features, right? So. That's kind of the basics of the, the, the multi-architecture uh, Docker build and run and, and sharing.
Perfect, perfect. Jason, thank you so much. That was a great, great demo. Even Humphrey says so. Good. <laughs> the demo is cool. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I was just going to say, for, for those of you who want to go try this out, um, this is the, the repo, right? They can just go right over to the ARM software. Or yeah, if you want to go right now, let's, uh, I think I, we should have probably shared this one here. This, this is the live thing that I'm, I'm running from. It's in my personal account at the moment because I did some tweaks just for the purpose of the, the show here, but you can copy that one. It's public and you can see the same files I'm putting on the screen right now. Cool, yeah. So, um, you know, head on over to the uh, github.com forward slash arm dash software forward slash developer and you'll see a little projects or documentation folder there. I think the mm -hmm. Docker one is inside the documentation folder. So you go into doc yep. yeah, it's documentation. So you go into documentation, you'll find the Docker guide um, and it walks you through the entire process. You know, there's click throughs, what, what type of workstation are you on? Where would you like to deploy it? Et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. There's lots of cool stuff there. Cool. Okay. So, um, it does look like we have a question, so I'm going to remove your screen share, and I'm going to remove this banner. And let's take this question from Arjit, um, very, very ambitious community developer here. Uh, Jason Andrews, had you ever have you ever had to buy some storage units separately for running Docker containers? And in, in parentheses, I had to buy another SSD because of too much containers. <laughs> yeah, that can happen. So um, Docker does tend to generate a lot of uh, data on your disk. And I guess that maybe there's a little bit explanation as to why, right? So one of the neat things about Docker is it can store all of the history that you do. So when you run a Docker file, every one of these commands, uh, you can imagine a large project has a large file. It, it can store those layers um, you know, on your disk so that when you do it again, it can go pull the existing things. It says, I already, you already did that before, so I don't need to do it again. It's extremely smart about that, uh, but at the same time, it does kind of fill up your disk. So yeah, what I would recommend is you learn some tricks about how to kind of get rid of those historical things when you don't need them, because a lot of people, uh, they finish their project and then they got kind of a lot of leftover stuff that you can clean out. So yeah, Docker, you know, there's some pruning commands, like there's a Docker system prune dash A. That's what I do a lot. You can just maybe type it here. If, if I guess so I'm not sharing the screen at the moment, but um, yeah, there's some commands to kind of clean up the mess and uh, be more efficient with your disk. Cool. So Arjit, hopefully that answered your question. And then David has a comment here. He says, AI containers have that habit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sure cool. Do. So, um, you know, unless there are any other questions from the community, we'll give you all just a few seconds here to ask some questions. Otherwise, we're, this is probably going to be an early end. Um, we'll close oh, this let's out. keep going, Robert. Come on. Let's do a couple more demos, can we? Oh, you have more demos. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I thought this was the only demo. No, please. no, yes, no. no. <laughs> we can do more than that. Okay, so what's the next demo? Jason, oh, you, get, you keep me in the loop here. What's the next one? Okay, so let's uh, let's do the next one. So the next one is the situation. Let me just go back to the terminal here uh, where we want to do a remote build. Okay, so think of a scenario where you have a large project and you're on your laptop and you're doing your development, it's going good, but you have to build containers and it's kind of slow, right? Maybe you'd like a more powerful machine. So what we're gonna do here is set up a context to do a remote build. And I'm gonna use uh, AWS Graviton 2 for that. So on my terminals, uh, I've got four terminals here. The two on the right are really in the AWS uh, Graviton 2 instance. So I'll do my favorite command to you name there. You can even see in the kernel string, it says AWS and it's a ARC64. So it's a Graviton 2, I think it's a C6G instance of some type. And we can use this as a remote builder and we can use it to build for a specific uh, architecture. So what I'm gonna do here is a context create and I'm gonna say, when you do the build, go off and connect to this other machine by SSH and then build the application for the ARM v7 architecture and then push it to uh, Docker Hub. Okay, so I'll run that one. It'll set up the context. And now what it's doing is it's going off on the remote machine and you can't even see that, right? It's all transparent and 
pretty much invisible, and now it's pushing it uh, to the Docker hub. So if I go over on the AWS machine, you'll see I just built that image. It's, it's actually over on the remote machine itself, uh, but I could, could do that in a way that I had, had more compute behind it, so I didn't have to stress my local laptop or whatever computer I was doing. I just built it remotely um, using that connection. So that's pretty slick if you have things that are uh, you know, bigger projects, take more time to build, uh, you can just use a cloud machine like that. Now, one of the things about that is if you want to run that image, I could run it on my local machine. So this, this two command file here sets the context back to default. So that would say, okay, when the Docker uh, commands are invoked, use my local machine again and then run that container that I just built on the remote machine in the cloud and push to uh, Docker Hub. So if we run that one, um, it will go off and pull that down from Docker Hub, uh, and then it will run the same hello program we looked at. And you see right here, it shows on the string that it was built in AWS, right? So now I ran the application on my laptop. Uh, it was for the... 32-bit uh, user space, and it was actually built in the cloud uh, with AWS Graviton 2. So that's that's pretty cool because you didn't really tell any difference when I ran those commands. I mean, minor differences, and I used a remote machine, which had lots more CPU and lots more storage. Great, yeah. So we're getting we're getting uh, some feedback here from iShot Jr. He didn't know about remote build. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Bonus demos are the best demos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. It said that Tyeth here was like, oh, the sudden rejuvenation of Robert as soon as he found out there were some bonus demos. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. I, I, won't, I won't just end episodes early next time. So there, there is a question here from David um, real quick. He says, are there any demos on ML in a container, like object detection? <clears throat> yes. Um, in, in the... Uh... Docker uh, namespace we just talked about, there's some different things that are in there. There's two types, actually. One type is for ML on server. So that would be like your, your Graviton kind of uh, instances and how to run TensorFlow and PyTorch and even MLperf, like benchmarking uh, things. And then there are the more kind of embedded ones, which would be targeted more like the Cortex M55. So TensorFlow Lite Micro, um, you know, more of those embedded uh, kind of ML. So we have both of those containerized uh, in that namespace we talked about. Excellent. Yeah, so definitely go check out that namespace. Now, yeah. um, you know, we, we've already mentioned the, the GitHub repository um, for this. Aisha JR is asking if there's any write-ups, and we did provide that link um, for you all to go check out the write-up uh, for the multi-arc, multi-platform um, mm -hmm. documentation there. So... Uh, I shot JR, go check that out. Otherwise, ping me on Discord and I can share that link with you again, or we'll probably also provide it in the description of this video. So, Jason, did, did, was this the last demo? No, how about one more? Let's do it. Okay. One more. <laughs> <laughs> cool. No, I love it. I love it. Let's, let's do it all. Let's, we're going to okay. this whole hour. So, the last one I'm going to do is with GitHub Actions. So, as GitHub has gotten so popular, almost everybody is using it. Um, you know, the the next thing which is becoming popular in GitHub is called GitHub Actions. That's where, you know, typically it's used when you check in code, it's going to trigger something to happen, which could be a build or a test, or in this case, we're going to use it to trigger uh, the build of a Docker image. Um, now, if you just go on GitHub and you create a GitHub action, you know, the compute that's behind, um, you know, the GitHub application is all x86 based. Um, and you can use it for that, it's certainly fine. And you can do the build X multi-arc like I showed, that's certainly fine too. But what I wanna demo today is what's called the self-hosted runner. Um, so this is a, a case where I'm going to show how to make a change to our hello.c program. And then GitHub will automatically kick off a build of a, an ARM Docker image using this self-hosted runner. So the way we do it is we, we go into the AWS cloud. We have our EC2 instance, again, which is uh, the same one as on the bottom terminal here. That's a Graviton2. And we're going to run an application which comes from GitHub that is the 
uh, self-hosted runner. So if people haven't seen this before, uh, if you go into your GitHub projects under settings, and then you look at actions, and then there's runners uh, here. So I've put a runner, uh, which is currently green and idle, which is in this other terminal behind there waiting for something to do. And then when I trigger an action, I can steer it toward that runner, and then I'll be able to do the build of the container right on an ARM64 machine. I can push to Docker Hub, and then you know, that's simple as that. So it's, it's really nice, um, and we can, we can show how to do that. So let's, uh, let's do it. So if I jump back to the top of the uh, project here on GitHub, I'm gonna go to the hello.c. Now, I don't know if people have seen this. This is fairly recent, I don't know how many people are using GitHub, but if you go to the com and change to github.dev, uh, you will get magically a VS code uh, in your same browser window. So this has been pretty cool. Lots of people interested uh, in this one as of late. So let's just take that. And uh, hopefully this will open the hello.c. Here it is. Okay, so now I'm in the VS code, you know, which is behind my GitHub. Uh, and we can make a change. Let's say hello innovation coffee and save that. And then if we uh, go back over here, we can just put a comment, change hello.c, and we can commit that uh, to GitHub. Okay, so now what's happening is I have committed my change to the print statement. And then it's going to trigger that action to run. And you'll see a new line just came here that it's running my job. OK, and it's completed. So what happened was it ran the GitHub action, again, which I can, can jump back to here. There's a YAML file and the self-hosted runner. And it gives the instructions of what to do. So it's going to pull the project, log into Docker Hub, do a Docker build, and then push. And I did that all automatically. And I did it on an ARM. Uh, Graviton2 instance in AWS, right? So if I go back to my repositories here, just refresh this, uh, here's my new one I just made, Hello World Actions. That just came from uh, that GitHub. So it's pretty cool that you can actually go off, you know, do your code commits and trigger automatically a Docker image to be built and built right on the ARM architecture if that's uh, relevant to your project. Amazing, amazing, Jason. This is really cool. People are yeah. actually very excited about the uh, GitHub Actions uh, demo. So GitHub Actions, please. It, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Okay, cool. Yeah. So so today we've shown three demos. That's that's awesome. That's, I think the most demos <laughs> that someone brought into this this show. So kudos. Let's remove um, your screen share here, um, and we'll make sure uh, you know for everyone watching either now live or on demand later. We'll make sure that we provide as many links as possible in the description so that you all can follow along while you're watching this and go have some fun on your own building out these cool demos uh, yourself. Now, uh, is it okay to close this out now, Jason? <laughs> yeah, we could go on for days. I can show more demos. But I think that's a good, that's a good top three. You get the basics, how to use cool. the, the architecture, how to do remote builds, and how to use the GitHub Actions. It's a good start. Excellent, excellent, yeah. So to summarize, uh, just what Jason said, we, we talked about D Docker, Docker containers, talked about what they are, um, addressed the multi-arc, multi-platform, what that is, what that means, and why it's important to developers. We talked about the evolution of, of ARM compute. So, you know, how has ARM computing changed over time? And then Jason gave us three demos, the ones which he just summarized right now. So I think that was a pretty hearty, cup of innovation coffee <laughs> right there. <laughs> Sometimes I go pretty cringe um, with, with my statements. But yeah, cool. So Jason, gosh, thank you so much for joining us. I know your time is very valuable. We appreciate having you here as well as everyone here watching. Thank you so much for your time taking an hour of your whole day and spending it with us uh, means a lot, means a lot to us. Um, so thank you so much. Jason, before we close out, is there any last words or things you would like to say to our viewers or, you know, just in general? Uh, no, just thanks for watching. Yeah, definitely check out Dev Summit coming up. Uh, I'll be there. Unfortunately, it's going to be virtual again, but uh, we've got some presentations and some workshops lined up there. 
Um, that will be really fun stuff, uh, especially if you're interested in cloud related things. We're going to have some AWS uh, type of workshops. And yeah, check out the agenda and definitely hope to see everybody there. Great reminder. Thank you, Jason. You have a presentation there, right? Yeah, I have a presentation about machine learning on ARM. And also we're going to have a workshop about um, you know, some cloud development uh, things. Excellent. Yes. Great reminder, everyone, go check out devsummit.arm.com. Right there. There's the link. Don't forget to register. Register now. Go over there right after the show. Register um, and, uh, and have some fun with us at Dev Summit. There's lots of cool stuff going on, so it'll be great. Jason will be there. I'll be there. Um, and yes, like as Jason said, it will be virtual, but hopefully next year we go back to in-person. So yeah, someday soon. We're excited to see everybody someday. again. Yeah. yeah, someday soon. Very excited. Cool. Well, then let's close this out. Jason, thank you once again for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Everyone on the call, thank you very much. Um, if you enjoyed the video, I'll just harp on this one last time. Make sure you hit that like button. It helps us out a lot. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Again, we go live here at 5 p.m. UTC every Thursday. Bring your coffee. Enjoy it with us while we meet with amazing guests and talk about great ARM technology and use cases here on Innovation Coffee. Hope you'll have a wonderful rest of your week. Jason, see you later. Thank you, everyone. Talk to you Thanks, later. Robert. Bye, everyone.